Hi, I'm Dr. Kathleen Walls. And I'm Puka Kahane from Me Curator Art Gallery in St. Lucia. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the, the Piff Connection, Connection on UCCN-TV. I'm your host, Dr. Kathleen Walls, and you are joining us today on Dr. Walls and Friends and in combination with the PIF Connection. I am here today with a very special guest who is fresh into Philadelphia, which is the PIF headquarters, Ms. Buki yes. Kahane. Yes. All right. So welcome. Thank you. Um, and so tell us, where are you coming from today versus where you normally travel okay, from? So today I left uh, New York, Manhattan, mm -hmm. to yes. come down here today to see you guys. That's right. Straight into the 215. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Welcome. And New York by way of? I was down by Wall Street this okay. time. So normally I'm in Harlem, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. And I thought, let me just try somewhere new. So I went to the complete lower end and I was in Wall Street, Water Street, in fact. All right. Yes. So, Bookie, let's tell the people a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. Tell it where are you originally from. How did you even get to come here today? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, I normally start with my name, yes. Buki. People are kind of intrigued by that. So Buki mm -hmm. is a Nigerian name. I am Nigerian. My surname is Jewish, Kehane. Mm -hmm. So I'm married to a uh, to an Israeli. Okay. And uh, so I have a great kind of uh, uh, a combination mm -hmm. of different roots and connections with that. Um, originally from Nigeria, born there, and I was raised in London, England, okay. where I was educated and spent some time there um, doing an art history degree and also working at various companies mm -hmm. from the Olympic Games to Ernst & Young and very other companies there. Okay, and so then after leaving the UK, where did you end up? So we decided to leave the UK and just try life somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we initially went to Antigua mm. in the Caribbean yes. and spent a few a few years there. Okay, gave birth to our third child out in Antigua, so uh -huh. she has an Antiguan passport, a Nigerian parent, and a Jewish dad. I so love this. She's going to be good. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we spent some time in Antigua, and then we made our way over to Saint Lucia, wow. which we've been there for four years now Ooh. and uh, life is good life okay. is good okay you know what i'm feeling like my passport is a little empty okay. right now <laughs> <laughs> yes there's been a lot of travel within mm -hmm. this 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 life of mine very blessed very fortunate yes. and pre-kids there was also quite a lot of traveling as well but um okay but yes all right so often on our show we talk about people's passion and mm. purpose and so i heard art history yes. i'm hearing travel yes. i'm hearing diversity Take me back to when you were little. Take us back. What were you thinking when I get older, I want to be? Yes. Do you know what? It's one of those things where I knew, I knew I'm a, I'm a very visual person mm -hmm. and visual culture has always inspired me from Nigeria when I would grow up and just see my mum's gele and just how bright and colorful it was to like life in London. And you know, what London taught me was that visual culture can be a career. Mm -hmm. um, I see something and instantly I have quite a myriad of, um, of, of thoughts that come to mind okay. and so I spent my life kind of going I, I love that doesn't that look amazing and we were like no Bucky it's just a picture but I'm like no you don't see it so um, London showed me that visual culture can be a career, hence why I did my degree in art history yes. and pursued that passion and um, just found the right way to articulate myself when it came to art and yes. how to describe what I saw, not just saying, wow, mm -hmm. but being able to actually describe it in more detail and use the right discourses to explain that to people okay. and to the right industries as now, well. Now, do you create art also? I do create art. Mm -hmm. I don't show a lot of my art. Because, <laughs> did you all see her laughing over to get a little shy? What? <laughs> no, I, I think for me, it's really about trying to give others, especially the young St. Lucian, mm -hmm. the voice for them to be heard and seen. Okay. And so right now, the platform and the time is really for them. Okay. So. Oh, nice. Yes. Now, we're not going to let you get off the hook without talking about your art a little bit. We can't let an artist not talk about their art. Yeah. So what type of art do you like to create, even if you don't share it with the yes. public? For me, it's been able to, I think it's that ability to see the everyday life and to t see beauty in that yes. so I do a lot of photography and mm -hmm. I tend to write uh, prose mm. with that as well okay and that inspires me to be able to 
um, convey a story, both visually and also verbally, mm -hmm. um, through that one image. And it can be a still or it can be a moving image, but I tend to really try and focus on mm -hmm. what I see in my everyday life, which can be quite simple and quite mundane, okay. but there's also beauty within that. And mm -hmm. I think as an artist living... Um, you know, an, an artist who has a, a full-time job, who has children, who has commitments. Yes. My mundane is, is forever around me, so it's up mm -hmm. to me to see beauty within that. I love that, yes. It, I, and I agree mm. with that wholeheartedly. I think that's such a deeper message yes. for people to be able to find beauty in the mundane. Yes. That's really powerful because there's something beautiful every day mm -hmm. and really in every moment if you take time to yes, find it. Yes, I think you have to simply take that time otherwise you are going to be lost in the yeah. system and not appreciate the simple things from, you know, the birds or that particular, you know, I know you guys have a lot of to do with when it comes to animals as well, mm -hmm. just the beauty within that as well. Yeah, so. that's right. I know there's times where I remember my younger brother and I would be driving back from New York and we'd be caught in traffic. Mm -hmm. And I would love it because it gave me time to look out the window yes. and look at the sky art yes. that was happening, the various colors, the shapes of the clouds. And we would just spend our time looking and then we'd look around at other cars where people were frustrated and angry and it was like, but look up. Yes. Pay attention to the beauty that's yes. around Try you. Try and find that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, as a doctor of clinical psychology, I'm always interested in people expressing themselves. Yes. And I heard you talk about using the prose for yes. the verbal expression, using the art for how would you define that expression mm -hmm. when you're doing the photography and the artwork? Um, it's a hard question to answer mm -hmm. because people say, Bookie, how do you come up with that? And it really is just simply from the heart. Yeah. And so I tend to put pen and paper down and I begin to write and, mm -hmm. it, and it comes out and it's fluid and it makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm quite fortunate that I can do that yeah. and, and, uh, and explain how I feel or what I'm going for or what I see. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense and it touches people and it resonates yes. with people. Yes. So I don't tend to uh, review my pieces again and again and again. I just mm -hmm. simply tend to write mm -hmm. and, and edit very, very, you know, tweaks here and there mm -hmm. and let the expression really come out. I think okay. that's a lot more organic. Yeah. It's a lot more subconscious. Yeah. And uh, I think it speaks to a great level about emotional intelligence and how you can connect with that inner that's right. intelligence and explain it and express it. Big time. Now, what about the visual side? Mm. When you're taking a picture or yes. even when you experience a piece of artwork, what is that like for you when, in regards to the expression of it? it? There's a lot. There's a lot that tends to happen when, a piece of, when I see a piece of art um, or I take a, a photograph and it's just trying to quieten mm -hmm. the outside um, sensations and just try and pick out two or three significant meanings to what mm. it is I'm taking, what it is I'm seeing. Okay. Because I can go off in quite a few di directions and tangents. Yes. However, with the art, I tend to find um, if I'm focused and I try and pick f two or three, yes. I can really expand on yeah. that and yeah. look within what the artist, if, if it's myself or something I'm seeing, is trying to say, mm -hmm. um, what I can see mm -hmm. within that, and also what somebody else is also trying to see. So yes. it's going to be a, a three-way dialogue, yeah. and there's a lot happening, hence why I just try and limit it to two or, two or three focal points. Yeah, I love that. And mm -hmm. I think it's so important because sometimes when people, one, are experiencing their emotions, it can become very overwhelming. Yes. And not even take into consideration what you just did where you talked about the three-way yes. di dialogue that's happening and be able to connect with the various feelings. And sometimes you're absolutely right. Just highlight maybe one or two yes. and see how deep they go in. Yes. And, and, and you can, it, it can, one or two is, is, is ample. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of depth. And I think when you allow yourself to really delve into that visual culture and that mindset where you're tapping into your emotions yes. and the subconscious, those free topics can can take mm -hmm. you in a, in various strands, yeah. in various places. Well, we've learned a little bit about Buki right mm -hmm. now. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to start talking about some of the artists that you work with. Yes. All right, we'll be back in a moment on Dr. Walls and Friends and the Piff Connection.